Spider-Man, the web-slinging, crime-fighting, dance-aholic, controversial, hero that we all know and love. Either it be Toby yelling at Carmine that today is that day, or Tommy Boy Holland joining the army to then join the Payday Gang going in some weird, fun, wacky heist. Or Andrew Garfield and I don't know, paralysis, a, a war, a play, it doesn't matter, Andrew. You do you, you gorgeous, scrumptious, hubby, wubby, 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 wubby prince. And besides the big lights of Hollywood with Illuminati rituals and funny Fortnite islands, you have video games and animation that have a ton of other cool versions of the webhead. Spectacular, spectacular Spider-Man. See, how could you not like an animated Spider-Man? I plead the fifth. Spider-Man is a character that has so much legacy that has created a ton of variety in the spider dimension. You can ask a person who their favorite Spider-Man is in all of media and you can get so many different answers. I know little dorks who make their video essays may tell you otherwise, but there is no definitive way to make a Spider-Man. He could be a kid, he could be a photographer, he could be fun and hip, he could be grown up where he does experiments with Rigby from regular show, he could be old and defeated, he could be Nicolas Cage, a pig, it's your mom, a cartoon pig, and he could be black via symbiote. What else would you have thought I meant, you f***ing racist? Miles Morales is a Spider-Man that exists because of Donald Glover, since he wanted to be Spider-Man but got turned down for Andrew Garfield. And don't get me wrong, I love me some Gambino, trust me, it feels like summer, Donnie. I get it, it's time to move to the winter already. But since Gambino didn't get to Web Sling, a comic was made in his honor. And that's when Miles Morales was born. And fast forward to the thing we all care about and came here for. It's now 2018, and that comic led to Miles Morales getting his own animated movie. And he also gets to be the secondary villain in the Spider-Man video game. And that's because the main villain was MJ. She did something that Doc Ock and Mr. Negative couldn't even do, and that's destroy the game's replayability. I fucking hate these missions, and I hate the Miles missions. I don't care about playing hide and seek with the Rhino. If this game has any of these, I'm gonna flip my shit. Into the Spider Verse was a surprise when it burst onto the scene. A Sony animated Spider Man project without Peter Parker as the main protagonist set in the multiverse. This was also a year after the Emoji movie came out, which was right next to Minions and the singing gorilla whose dad was watching him from jail as the most hated thing on the internet at the time. And the film was being made by Phil and the Millers. Not those Millers. Okay. I'll save you for later, depending on how this video performs, but not you either. Yes that Miller. Phil Lord and Chris Miller are the brains behind the funny running cot that goes Flit Lockwood and Will Ferrell becoming a corporate asshole for the next 10 years. They also made My Name Jeff 1 and 2, as well as the original Clone High with our favorite president, John F. Kennedy. And since copying the homework of the Lego movie didn't quite work, Sony stopped being lazy and got the real deal instead and began to go ballistic with the webhead. If I haven't praised into the Spider-Verse enough in other videos, then you for sure have been hearing about it again and again and again since 2018. Everybody loved the cute Post Malone song, the leap of faith with What's Up Dang? Danger. And while Angry Joe didn't like the slowed down frame rate, everyone else thought it had a ton of visual flair and style, including the child lovers that get to choose who and who does not get the naked golden man. So fuck you, Joe. You, you overstepped. overstepped. No, no Christmas. Christmas. Into the Spider-Verse made $384 million, which got overshadowed by Tom's movie getting a Billy. But hey, Tom, who won the Oscar? Drips in Europe, vacation. This is fucking Brooklyn. Wake the fuck up, cocks of a knife crime. No AC, tap water. Five years later after Cryo State, we finally get the squeakquel. And over the course of five years, a lot has happened in the running animation, not just for Miles Morales, but also all the funny little friends around him. Puss and Boots came back from the dead with slowed down frame rates and 2D over 3D. Ninja Turtles looks cool and fresh, with the turtles actually being teenagers for once instead of grown ass men. Arcane got a ton of fully clothed women, which is surprising because the video game player base is full of non clothed beluga whales. And Chicken Run got a sequel. Yes, Chicken Run got a sequel before Freebirds and Chicken Little. FX and Disney, what the hell is going on? No squeakquel? What? You, you guys a bunch of chickens or what? Into the Spider-Verse created a chain reaction of a bunch of animated studios getting their shit together, which created a new boom of fresh ideas and creative art styles. Like Puss in Boots, who used to be the fat cat that drank milk and had beef with Humpty Dumpty, now has a film about ego death, where the main villain is literally death himself. Animation is in a really good spot right now because of Spider-Verse's influence to the medium. Even the people who are now succeeding give credit to that film. And while everybody was getting inspired, the OG was grinding in silence and dropped to part two. Across the Spider-Verse is a massive step up to everything from its predecessor. Every frame of the movie is full of creativity and passion. You could rush and roulette the playback and pause anywhere to find a fucking painting. It's a masterclass in animation.
and then we got Elemental. The Pixar video was made pre-Elemental, and the only thing I said about it is a prediction of it not doing so hot, maybe. So now for the first time, let's discuss Elemental and the weird glizzy meat eating bubble around it recently. My friend LT Cobra made a video about Spider-Verse where he compares it to Pixar's latest animated failures. And people were annoyed with its obvious clickbait. It has Elemental with money loss and Spider-Man with three Oscars. And then there's my video with a little downward arrow with all the ops looking smug while Sheriff Woody is really sad. And Twitter, or X now, being the stupid side it is, we'll always have stupid people. And those people have put us in the crosshairs lately because of Elemental's recent international success, which has created a really odd discussion of just false information and weird judgments. First things first, these videos have not aged like milk because a million follower gimmick account that can't even sell 200 plushies said so. Fuck out of here. Elemental is directed and co-written by Peter Sohn and released this year. The film had a budget of $200 million, and in the domestic box office it flopped hard, generating $151 million, which doesn't even break even on the film's core budget, not even including marketing and other financial factors. But that marketing campaign, yeah, it was a failure. If I ever see that little shit clawed in my life, I'm whooping his ass in the fucking tomorrow. A lot of people thought it looked pretty generic and boring, and it released next to Spider-Verse, which created options to what movie you wanted to watch that weekend. Like, do we want to hang out with Claude or Miguel O'Hara? Why are you blue? For the longest time, it didn't even look like Elemental would be profitable. And then Korea started watching it, along with a big majority of Asia, which has now earned the film around $462 million as of this video's release. The film is now barely profitable after it just recently broke even. But still, these videos have not aged like milk. This isn't a cope either, it just literally hasn't. Fuck your plushies. Elemental surpassed Spider-Verse in the international box office by $1 million. Elemental has $307 million and Spider-Verse has 306 million. And when you factor in domestic, Spider-Verse has made $687 million while Elemental has made 462. million. That's a $200 million lead for Spider-Man. But I got fucking idiot drones celebrating that Claude has won. You have assholes on Twitter acting like the fucking Death Star got blown up. Elemental hasn't won the box office. They won International by $1 million, and they still blew the debut. Also take in mind that Spider-Verse has a $100 million budget to Elemental's $200 million budget. And if Twitter people can't even do basic research to see that Elemental hasn't won, then of course they're not going to apply logic to a $100 million budget either. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem was $70 million, mostly because of its shorter runtime. But because it has such a small budget, its smaller box office is still impactful, making the profit margins larger, which led to the film being a success. And even with the low budget, the working conditions of TMNT were said to be very reasonable and lax. I know the Across the Spider-Verse creators allegedly cracked the whip a bit on its animators, making them hustle and do redraft after redraft, seeing their family once a year while getting paid in bathroom breaks. But even if you were to give, let's say, $10 million worth of raises and bonuses to the animators in the production, the budget is still $110 million to Elemental's $200 million. A film's inflated budget never drips down to the animators. The animators will always be pond scum to the big corpos and big well tower. Also take in mind this is fucking Disney. The leader of Disney is a piece of shit that doesn't even want to pay the pond scum less than 0.1%, and it's a big reason why WAG and SAG are on strike right now. I have a whole video you could watch about Disney's asshole behavior, but Disney doesn't care about the little animators in the shack. The big ass budget is fuck you money that could be wasted since Pixar wants to stockpile projects. Look at the Marvel department. $200 million for Secret Invasion. Daredevil had a whole season made with $50 million. Across the Spider-Verse is way more complex than the last 10 Pixar films, and all of them have budgets over $150 million. Pixar's big budgets is why they're still in the negative right now, even with Elemental making a couple million profit. And they used to make hundreds of millions of dollars worth of profit. The company isn't saved. It's still on fire. It's why I say these videos haven't aged like milk. One small victory doesn't put out the flame. Pixar is still laying off staff and suffering because of Lightyear's $300 million flop. And reflecting on earlier, winning internationally by a million dollars is stupid when you have a $200 million budget, but it's also stupid when you have allegory depictions, which makes it really safe. Pixar has been having problems with the international market due to the inclusion of homosexuality in many Pixar films. A lot of the world does not like the progressiveness of Disney, so they will ban them from being seen by anyone. All Elemental has is a non-binary character that's in the background where it never gets acknowledged. It was probably invented out of thin air for a way of advertisement, but then it got dropped when they realized it could possibly lose them $200 million again. The film is safe and pisses no one off. Everyone's a bunch of elements instead of real races of people, and given that the director is Korean, making a Korean allegory about his own Korean immigrant family, Korean people ate this shit up. A lot. They saved the film. And then the rest of Asia ate it up, though, because it's an allegory. And it's super harmless. It's a basic love story. Across the Spider-Verse makes statements in the film, supporting Black Lives Matter, 
pattern having a flag in Gwen Stacy's room that reads protect trans kids. Her dad wears trans flags on his uniform as well. The whole subplot may be an allegory for coming out. Also, the main lead of the film is black and Puerto Rican. So because of these reasons, the film was banned in the Middle East entirely. And for those who don't know, China is pretty fucking racist when it comes to black people. Star Wars The Force Awakens had John Boyega smacked right there in the poster since he was the main character. And yeah, he takes a big ass spot, but in the China poster, they shrunk him and put him below everybody else. For Black Panther, the poster had Chadwick Boseman on it. And yeah, he's a flat out black guy. So they covered him up with a mask. Usually for a lot of non-Chinese actor led movies, if the characters can be concealed, they will be. They even do this with Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Also, I'm not gonna lie, this Chinese poster is fucking sick. Off topic, but look, look, Miles is Wukong. But even with the Middle East ban and China and other countries not being too fond of black led films, it still pulled a million less than Elemental, a Disney Pixar movie with a $200 million budget that has earned $200 million less than Spider-Verse. But here's the thing, none of this matters, none of it. When I was in the pig pen of defending myself on Twitter, my friend Arachnid Mail made a really good overall statement. Don't know how people are trying to spin Elemental against Spider-Verse right now, as if making money is all that makes up a good movie. Why talk about art when we could point at numbers and yell? And this is true, the new TMNT sucks because it didn't make as much as the funny Michael Bay ones. Puss in Boots means nothing because it didn't make as much as Elemental. Spider-Verse means nothing because it didn't make a billy like Toy Story 4 or the live-action Spider-Man movies. None of it matters. Even though Spider-Verse objectively made more than Elemental, it's also just objectively a better movie, which is more important. I said this in the Pixar video, but I like Soul. But as a piece of animation, it's boring and doesn't fully play with its medium, and instead went toward unnecessary realism. Turning Red is a $200 million project about generational trauma in a Chinese family, and the same allegory was also done in Everything Everywhere All at Once, but chose to be more creative and special with its allegory, and because of that, it swept the Oscars, despite only having a $25 million budget. Into the Spider-Verse wasn't nearly as successful as Pixar's biggest successes, but it still won an Academy Award. But more importantly, it inspired a ton of other animators and studios that brought more legitimacy to the world of animation. Money doesn't matter. People burn money on stupid shit all the time. Trust me, just look at my Lego collection. But even if Spider-Verse got smoked in its box office, it wouldn't have stopped me from making that Pixar video. Elemental has a good message. It's a personal story about Korean immigration, but it hides behind its allegory without diving headfirst into it. Disney's Zootopia had an allegory about prejudice, and the whole film is built around that idea. It really focuses on the world building of Zootopia as a city, and dives into how prejudice affects the people in its world in vast detail that ties directly into the plot. Elemental doesn't go out of its realms of its love plot, and instead has this focus on a random adventure of saving a convenience store while falling in love. Zootopia fleshes out its characters and lets the world develop, which then also develops the relationship plot. Nick Wilde is a good character with layers and complexity. When he was a kid, he wanted to be noble, but him being a predator led to him being judged to the point where he went into a life of crime. And then at the end, it gets deconstructed by Judy, and he goes back to being noble again. Wade is a Gary Sue nice guy. He just cries and is a great stand-up person. That's it. Judy Hopps is an ambitious dreamer that is defeated constantly by the world around her, working harder than anyone else for no one to respect her because she's a bunny. And through the adventure, she learns that even she herself is a hypocrite. She does the same to others of what happens to her. She has prejudices, and in the end, it's deconstructed by Nick. Amber has anger problems and doesn't want to run away and fall in love. It's a love film without that much complexity to its world and how it works with the characters, which is weird because the whole element angle of it is actually really cool. I just really wish they were more creative with its animation and the story around the city. Zootopia did, and Zootopia had a $150 million budget. And it's a Disney movie and won an Academy Award. It's big, it's Disney, and it's good. See, I'm not biased against Disney. Also, I'm not a furry. It was just a good example to use. I swear to god, this is not even a bit. But Across the Spider-Verse is fantastic. Crunch sucks, but it doesn't take away the results of what came out of it. There was so much effort and care put into every frame of the movie, and it's only the first to a two-parter. Spider-Verse is a complex movie that tries to juggle a lot at once, where Miles was immature in the first movie as a kid learning to become Spider-Man. In this movie, Miles is Spider-Man, but is now conflicted if he has what it really takes to be Spider-Man, facing the consequences of his past actions, while also being expected to make mature decisions in the heat of moments. And you have characters all around him playing into these things. Themes. And this complex and unique story is assisted by beautiful visuals, music, and characters that make it a love letter to animation. It's gonna win the animation Oscar for sure, but now there's buzz of it being nominated for Best Picture, next to the Japan Bomber, who's literally me, and Girlhood who's literally me. <laughs> I'm Alan. Across the Spider-Verse is a lot more than just an animated film that comes and goes. It's why I can't hold Elemental on the same level as it, because that would be disrespectful to the talent and hard work that was put into Spider-Verse. Doing anything art-related is going to be difficult, and I bet passion and love was put into Elemental in some ways, but it's not on the same level as Spider-Verse. So in total, Elemental hasn't made the same amount of money as Spider-Verse. It's not a better film than Spider-Verse. Pixar is still in debt with their previous losses, so sorry, Mickey Mouse, you lose this one. You keep hiring the Pinkertons to 
do your dirty work, but they ain't gonna sell 200 plushies. With that, I'm Skipper. Follow me on this horrible website. Thanks for watching this video and click here if you wanna see a video where I talk about the downfall of Disney.